Self-image is so important because it is the key to fucking life. Who the fuck is going to buy what you're selling or uh, see your uh, value in any area of life with whatever it may be if you don't? Explain the I'm the best thing because at first, like if you're looking at it from a certain perspective, you could be like, God, that's so egotistical, but it's actually the least egotistical, egotistical like mindset to have in the way that you explain it. Can you please explain this? Because this has to do with self image and Mm -hmm. that's the next thing I want to just briefly touch on before we dive into this like woo woo that I want to get into. Like what the is self image? Because you've said this word at least a hundred times by now as well. Yeah. Self image is the way that you perceive yourself and the way that you perceive other people to see you. Yeah. So what happens is, again, our thoughts create our beliefs. Our beliefs get programmed into our creator field. Our creator field determines what we're getting back from people of the world. So a key telling sign that maybe self-image isn't as high as your higher self would like it to be is if you find people aren't valuing you in relationships, in career, in life. If you find people, maybe you start talking and they talk over you and you get annoyed by that. Like it makes you triggered, like not just like neutral, like it actually makes you feel like they're not listening the to what end I'm of saying. The world. Yes, yeah. yes. Those are some telling signs that self-image might not be where higher self wants it to be. Self-image is so important because it is the key to fucking life. Who the fuck is going to buy what you're selling or uh, see your uh, value in any area of life with whatever it may be if you don't? Who? Mm-hmm. Because... They won't because if you don't see it, it's not in your creator field and the world responds to your creator field, your electromagnetic field. And so I, uh, in a lot of, I've talked to a lot of souls all the time every day. So what I found is everyone's the fucking best. I'm the best at being Allie. There's no other Allie. Catherine's the best at being Catherine. There's no other Catherine. Catherine and me can say the same thing. We could go and teach the same exact course word for word, Catherine, and it would be different and it would resonate with different people because we have different stories. We have different looks. We have different voices. We have a different way of explaining things. Different life experience. Different life experiences. Yeah. Exactly. It's like the flavor is different. The flavor is different. Yeah. And the uh, meal could be the same. Mm-hmm. Like everyone can yes. make mac and cheese, but yes. everyone has a different flavor to it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when you understand your self-image and I have a lot of tools for this but one of them that you can take home and practice is it is scientifically metaphysically impossible to see in other people what we don't have in ourself so if you find yourself going oh my god they're so funny I could never be that funny or oh my god they um, are such a good businesswoman like uh, now I'm mad at them and now I can't do it or oh my god they wrote a book now I can't write a book no you are seeing their zone of genius You literally metaphysically, scientifically could not see it unless that existed within you. And so you're witnessing it just like how, um, have you ever had a friend talk shit about another friend and uh, the friend's like, oh my God, they're so needy. And then you're thinking about that friend, like, wait, you're needy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because you can't experience in anyone else what we uh, don't have. Yeah. So, uh, and this goes both ways, both positive and negative. So, uh, If you're going, oh my gosh, they're so talented and gifted, you have that. So your self-image tool that I'm going to give you today is where do you have that? So if you see a piano player playing piano beautifully and you're like, oh my God, they're such a creative songwriter. It doesn't mean that you're a songwriter. Maybe you are, but it doesn't mean that you're that. It means whatever you do, whatever your zone of genius is, you're equally that creative. And so when's the last time you can remember being that creative? affirmations, you know, don't work unless we emotionally connect. So we've actually got to turn it to a brain reprogramming statement. We go find the micro moment of the last time we remember being creative. We literally prove it to ourselves. Our brain likes proof. We now start to slowly suffocate the old neural pathways where we're beating ourselves up, judging, jealous, whatever. And we start to build new ones of praising ourselves, actually seeing our soul and all its contract. And the more you do that, you prove it by a memory of when you actually felt like that. Even if it was for like two fucking seconds, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Prove it to yourself. Emotionally connect. You've shifted. Do you do it again? You've shifted a little more. You do it again. You've shifted a little more. Before you know it, now you're getting your creator field aligned with your actual soul, with your soul attributes. Because our soul shows every single thing about us down to what our pinky toenail looks like, down to the qualities you think holds you back. 
everyone used to beat up on me for being a procrastinator. In high school, my mom used to be like, you're a procrastinator. Like, that's why you don't get good grades, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Teachers were like, you're never going to go to college. You're a procrastinator. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I was like, uh, I tried. I was a people pleaser, so I tried. Maybe they're right. Like, I beat up on myself. I was like, I shouldn't yeah. be that way. Yeah. Well, didn't get good grades. The only good grades I got was writing essays in English. Other than that, it was, it was D's over here for me. <laughs> but essays, it would be like A's. So... One time I tried to not procrastinate, I ended up doing way worse. I got like a C, I think. When I write it the night before, I would get an A. In my self-image healing, I'd go, wait a minute. My soul chose the quality of procrastinator. It chose it for me because it already knew my soul plan. It already knew I was going to create a business. It already knew these things. Well, nothing in the universe is positive or negative. Everything is both. So... I was like, okay, what's the good part of being a procrastinator? I found three great things. Lights a fire under my ass. I work really well under pressure. I get shit done in what would take people five days and five fucking minutes. All qualities that I need to succeed and achieve what my soul came here to do. My soul chose it on purpose for a purpose. So when, once you start to realize that, you start to unbecome and strip away these fucking tar, toxic things, limiting beliefs that were never yours in the first place. And you get back to who your soul was. You start to understand why your soul chose it. And then you would become in love with it. Like I'm in love with the fact I procrastinate. I love that about myself. I'm the fucking best. You're the best. Brennan's the best. Everyone's the fucking best. <laughs> and what that's when you have a high self-image, you can also recognize that other people are also the best. Mm, if you don't, yeah. you have this thing of this, this limitation. And it's a human thing. I've experienced it. We've all experienced it, but you have this thing of like, oh, I don't want to compliment them because that takes away from me. We've yes. all felt it. You know what I mean? Yep. We've all felt it. Yeah. But when you do that healing, you realize, wait a minute, I can have my soul contract and I can create and manifest what I want to create and manifest. You can have your soul contract. You can create and manifest what you want to create and manifest. And everyone can just fucking win.